Hey, Jason, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you very much. Nice to, uh, thanks for taking the call. Sure. Um, so my question is, I am saving for a house right now. And I have some other debts that I believe are healthy debts that I'm wondering if I should pay off before, you know, saving and, and saving up money for the house. Um, to elaborate on that a little bit, just some things here. Um, right now, I am saving 25% of every paycheck. Into, How much other debt do you have? So the debt that I have is I owe $36,000 on my car. And then I have a mortgage for a condominium that comes to about 900. Now the mortgage, um, I'm not living there. I'm renting that out. Um, and you know, the, the tenant lives there and you know, that was my first little property. Now I'm living with my fiance and her condo and my car payment is seven seventy five a month. However, the interest rate on that is one point nine nine. And as far as finances go, I have about a solid three months of living expenses uh, in my what, what, bank account. What do you make? Uh, my salary from my job is one hundred thousand dollars a year. And then I, I do make um, uh, rental income from my condo. Yeah, and how old are you? I am 37. Okay. I'll tell you what. When you come back from this break, we will um, uh, tell you what, what we, we would do in your situation. He and his fiance are yep. saving up for a, another house. He's got a condo worth about 900 k that he rents out. $775 car payment at one point whatever percent. Uh, makes a hundred k, and uh, was wondering about uh, whether you got to pay off the car or not, or be saving for a house. And that's about how far we got in the discussion. Is that a fair summary of what you told me, sir? Yeah, that's a fair summary. Okay, George. The condo is not worth nine hundred k, though. The condo, it's a small condo. Oh, oh you I'm said sorry. You were paying nine hundred a month on the mortgage. Correct. Oh, okay. I misunderstood. What's the condo worth? The condo I bought it for one fifty and it's currently worth two thirty. What do you owe on it? One twenty one. Okay. That's what I'm after. Okay, cool. I misunderstood. I apologize. Okay. And your goal now yep. is to get a primary residence? That is correct. For you guys to live in. You have any cash? Correct. Do I have any cash? Yes. In my bank I have three months of emergency savings, and then I keep one month of operating expenses in my checking. How much is that, all that together? Um, it's about 18000 in my savings, and it is about six in my checking account. Okay, we'll call it twenty-four. Okay. Now, in addition to that money, I have $25,000 saved up for the down payment of a house. Mm -hmm. And what's the balance owed on the car? $36,000. You told me that earlier. Okay. All right. Good. So you have the cash to pay this car off, but you told us at the beginning of the call that you want to keep it around because it's a healthy debt? I, you know, the, the interest is 1.99%. And I feel like I am making a lot more than that on, you know, wherever I'm investing this $25,000. So well you, you as, have $36,000. At one point nine nine, right? Yeah, and the so two, we'll call it, and you your twenty five thousand is sitting at what interest rate? Um, anywhere from six to eleven. Your cash is sitting at six to eleven. Yeah, right now. Um, yes, that is correct. Where six to eleven? So, um, I use a credit union that's giving me a fantastic interest rate. Is this a CD um, or something? You're not no, getting you're not, not getting anywhere near it, close to eleven on that twenty five, dude. You're talking about something no, that no, laddered up. You got like a thousand dollars at eleven, and then it bounces up from there. Maybe my numbers are wrong, but yeah. like so for example, in my bank, in my bank, the, the twenty let's, let's call let's call it five percent, can we? Okay. 
that's okay. Safe. So five over two is a three spread. Three okay. percent of thirty six thousand dollars, right? This is what you're making. Yes. Have you actually done the math on that? No. Okay. It's a thousand bucks. It's a thousand dollars. Okay. So you're not getting rich. Right. Also, this, you is, want to this make is that not spread. this is not some big sophisticated Wall Street play. You're parlaying no, no, right. a credit union savings account against a car loan, and you made a whole one thousand dollars. You didn't make nothing. But what about the money that is I'm that I'm saving for the house? That twenty five thousand dollars, which is not included in these numbers that we talked about. That money is being. I know, invested. but your premise is that your debt was good debt because you were making so much money on it, and I'm saying that's laughable. $1,000 is a joke. Yeah. You make $100,000 a year. That's not laughable. That's a real income. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're burning a lot of brain calories to make a grand. I agree. Okay. That's what I'm saying. And by the way, the only way to make that spread is if you had 36 grand in savings, which you don't. And so, so it's actually less than that. You're you're new to this, and you kind of walked into this, and we're abusing you. But I'm but I'm trying to make the point uh, just as lovingly as I can. Okay, so here's the thing: um, if I woke up in your shoes, having done all the stupid butt things I've done in my life, Jason, which by the way, everything you've done is brilliant compared to some of the stupid butt stuff I've done. So that's how I learned all of this was from experience, having done stuff the wrong way. If I yeah. woke up in your shoes, I, my son is close to your age, and he came in, he sat down and said, Dad, this is my situation. Based on what you know about money and based on the fact that tens of millions of people come to you for advice on how to handle money, what would you tell me to do? If you were my son, here's what I would tell you to do. Sell your condo, pay off your car today, use all the money you can scrape together after that above your emergency fund as your down payment on your new home and get married as soon as possible. That's what the okay. old man. That's what the old man would tell you, and he just did. Okay. And you hear where that, that com point. where that comes from is your largest wealth building tool is your income. It's and you've been trying to find an angle on this car. You're trying to find an angle on this uh, condo, and and you're trying to figure out a way that all this stuff is smart. You make really good money combined with your new spouse. You're going to make really good money. If the two of you will lean into that wonderful income and quit giving it to banks, you're going to turn into a lot of money. That's where we, that's what we want for you, Jason. And so every time we answer a question on this show, it's because we love you guys and we want you to win. And we're going to get right up in your grill because we love you. And let me show you the math on that, Jason, just to show you what your life could be. And it's going to be a lot more peaceful and a lot less complicated. You sell that condo, you're probably going to walk away with about a hundred grand. You take all the cash you have and you pay off the car today. That's going to still leave you with seven grand. Mm -hmm. And so he had, he had twenty five and twenty four. Twenty five and eight. He said he had eighteen in his emergency fund. And, and, had, and then he had another twenty five. He had fifty. Oh, so you're going to have even more cash than that. Fifty cash plus the condo. Now you have a Minus fully funded emergency fund, no condo to worry about, and you have a down payment for your first primary residence, and it's going to be a whole lot more than you got today. Yeah, it's going to be close to a hundred grand. And you yeah. can be back to investing in real estate later on down the road with you're cash. Do it with cash, with cash. But um, the 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 thing you that people do is, and here, here's what I want everybody else out there to listen to. Here's what we just did, and I had to learn to do this because I'm a math nerd. Math nerds do what Jason did, and I used to do it all the time. Okay, I'm making. I'm only paying one point nine nine, and I'm making five to eleven. Okay, that's great until you actually multiply it by the number of actual dollars. And then it becomes like you can buy a Happy Meal, right? And, and so all of your sophisticated gyrations end up being a mathematical joke. Because what nerds do is we look at the spreads and do all this stuff, and we, ne we never fail to look. We, we always fail to go all the way to the end result. And the end result is not much money for all this gyration. And when you actually do the actual dollars coming out of all your bullcrap techniques that somebody taught you on TikTok or whatever, then, you know, when you actually run the actual dollars out and then you factor in risk, you've not, you know, it's dumb.
It ends up just being dumb. Well, and that car is a depreciating asset. Yeah. And so it's going down in value as you hang around that 36 grand in debt. And yeah. so that makes it even more laughable as a healthy debt. And here, so. here's the other thing that backs this up. The, when we studied 10,167 millionaires, the number of millionaires that we interviewed that said, you know, I borrowed money on my car at a low interest rate and I put it into my credit union in a CD. And that's how I became a millionaire. The number of them that answered the question, how did you become a millionaire using that technique was precise out of 10,167. The number that did it that way was precisely zero. None of them did that. The number of them that became wealthy by leasing their cars, none of them did that. The number of them that used a whole life life insurance policy to build wealth, precisely zero. None of them said, I got rich, and it was freaking whole life. That's what did it. Not one of them said that. They all expressed regret about cars and rip-off financial products as being the things that held them back, they would have been millionaires sooner. Mm -hmm. And going into debt and credit cards and going on a trip they couldn't afford. When we asked them about their financial mistakes, they always outlined the things that regular people do all the time and strut around and act like they got airline miles on my card. Precisely the number of millionaires that we met that said, Dave, you know, I made it all with my airline miles. Precisely zero. So the data from actual millionaires, not your broke freaking frat brother, tells you otherwise. <laughs>